Welcome to Thought Stream Radio, where we read excerpts from works to share thoughts for change and ideas that matter. Today we're reading from Audre Lorde, uh, a poet, writer, civil rights activist, feminist, and here it, I will be reading selections from her Uses of the Erotic, The Erotic as Power, delivered in a paper in 1978. There are many kinds of power, used and unused, acknowledged or otherwise. The erotic is a resource within each of us that lies in a deeply female and spiritual plane, firmly rooted in the power of our unexpressed and unrecognized feeling. In order to perpetuate itself, every oppression must corrupt or distort those various sources of power within the culture of the oppressed that can provide energy for change. For women, this has meant a suppression of the erotic as a considered source of power and information within our lives. We have been taught to suspect this resource, vilified, abused, and devalued within Western society. On the one hand, the superficially erotic has been encouraged as a sign of female inferiority. On the other, women have been made to suffer and to feel both contemptible and suspect by virtue of its existence. The erotic has often been misnamed by men and used against women. It has been made into the confused, the trivial, the psychotic, the plasticized sensation. For this reason, we have often turned away from the exploration and consideration of the erotic as a source of power and information, confusing it with its opposite, the pornographic. But pornography is a direct denial of the power of the erotic, for it represents the suppression of true feeling. Porn pornography emphasizes sensation without feeling. For the erotic is not a question only of what we do. It is a question of how acutely and fully we can feel in the doing. Once we know the extent to which we are capable of feeling, that sense of satisfaction and completion, we can then observe which of our various life endeavors bring us closest to that fullness. The principal horror of any system which defines the good in terms of profit rather than in terms of human need, or which defines human need to the exclusion of the psychic and emotional components of that need, the principal horror of such a system is that it robs our work of its value, its erotic value, its erotic power and life appeal and fulfillment. Such a system reduces work to a travesty of necessities. The very word erotic comes from the Greek word eros, the personification of love in all its aspects, born of chaos and personifying creative power and harmony. When I speak of the erotic, then, I speak of it as an assertion of the life force of women, of that creative energy empowered, the knowledge and the use of which we are now reclaiming. The erotic functions for me in several ways, and the first is in providing the power which comes from sharing deeply any pursuit with another person. The sharing of joy whether physical, emotional, psychic, or intellectual, forms a bridge between the sharers, which can then be the basis for understanding much of what is not shared between them and lessens the threat of their difference. This is one reason why the erotic is so feared and so often relegated to the bedroom alone, when it is recognized at all. For once we begin to feel deeply all aspects of our lives, we begin to demand from ourselves and from our life pursuits that they feel in accordance with that joy, which we know ourselves to be capable of. Our erotic knowledge empowers us, becomes a lens through which we scrutinize all aspects of our existence. 
During World War II, we bought sealed plastic packets of white, uncolored margarine with a tiny, intense pellet of yellow, coloring perched like a topaz just inside the clear skin of the bag. We would leave the margarine out for a while to soften, and then we would pinch the little pellet to break it inside the bag, releasing the rich yellowness into the soft, pale mass of margarine. Then, taking it carefully between our fingers, we would knead it gently back and forth, over and over, until the color had spread throughout the whole pound bag of margarine, thoroughly coloring it. I find the erotic such a kernel within myself. When released from its intense and constrained pellet, it flows through the colors my life with a kind of energy that heightens and sensitizes and strengthens all my experience. Recognizing the power of the erotic within our lives can give us the energy to pursue genuine change within our world, rather than merely settling for a shift of characters in the same weary drama. For not only do we touch our most profoundly creative source, but we do that which is female and self-affirming in the face of a racist, patriarchal, and anti erotic society. Thank you for joining us today to hear selections from Audre Lorde's The Uses of the Erotic. I hope you have a broader, more erotic understanding of the erotic. See you next time.